I mean, I think we've touched on this a little bit already. I listen. I'm a huge supporter of uh, of the bike of the bicycle revolution that's happening across the country, and particularly here in Long Beach. Uh, there is no question. We've got to continue the uh, aggressive policies. Uh, one of the one of the very first things uh, that I did, uh, you know, it's just an example. Is we used to have a very kind of onerous, I thought, bike registration program in the city, and we actually had people being stopped on bicycles in the city of Long Beach by our our, our police officers on occasion. And on occasion, they were asked for their bicycle registration. How many of you ride your bikes with your bicycle registration on you? And if they, and on a few occasions, if they didn't produce that registration, they would get a ticket. And uh, I believe that was unfair, and certainly not something that, uh, particularly, was being targeted uh, in some in, in some ways. There were communities that were being unfairly, I think, targeted, and uh, we got rid of that. And I think it's that type of policy that we can do to encourage uh, bicycle riding. But beyond that, we've got to reinvest in infrastructure. And the reality is that a lot of our dollars when it came to the, our bike program came from the federal government. And we were fortunate, a lot of that money is now gone. And so in order for us to continue uh, this incredible expansion of our cycling program, we've got to bring in more additional dollars. And so we've got to look towards the future as we begin master planning infrastructure. We should never build a street in Long Beach without a bike lane. We should not be building infrastructure without building bike and pedestrian infrastructure alongside of it. Sidewalks need to be easily walkable. We need to have space for bicycles. I've had incredible opportunities to visit um, incredibly modern and progressive cities in Europe when it comes to their bike infrastructure. And while we've done some really great things, there's a lot more that we can do. And one of the key issues for us as, as advocates of, of cycling, and I am a, a, a cyclist myself, is how do we get communities have not generally been cyclists out on bicycles. How do we encourage more women to ride bikes? How do we encourage communities of color to get on bikes? Because if, the, if we want to expand those that are out, all using our, our, our bike infrastructure, we've got to also go after the communities that don't ride their bikes as much. I did mention earlier that um, I had an agenda item a number of years ago in the city council for a five-point plan for bikes, and I think that started the involvement that the city council has taken on in these recent years and done such a great job. Um, you might have followed that there was an assembly bill that we struggled to pass a couple years ago, didn't pass, uh, but it did pass this year because we put a lot of work into it. And that will protect bike riders from automobiles by giving them a uh, three foot distance. So it tells, uh, that um, whoever is driving an automobile has to swerve away from the bikes rather than the other way around to protect bike riders. And that was signed by the governor. So we were very, very excited about that. I also made sure that there was a bike path on the Gerald Desmond Bridge as we were able to approve that plan through the California Transportation Commission, thought that was very important. I think it's a real challenge to get people to ride mass transit. I was on the MTA for years. Um, I think it's very important that we change our habits. It's hard to change people's behavior when everyone's used to the cars. But that's what the flex car plan is all about. There are folks who live in urban areas who don't need a car every day. They can share cars, they can use a car, every, you know, during the weekend and not have one during the week. Um, I think what this city's done with bikes is great. I want to continue to support it and continue the emphasis on having bike riders be careful at stop signs. How many of you, I would like to ask, how many of you have seen bike riders run the stop signs and people are nearly in an accident. So the education has to be on both sides. I could answer this question with one word, I would say Cyclovia. I think that we ought to bring that program to Long Beach. We ought to bring it to Long Beach right away. It's going on all over the Southern California. But I have two minutes, so I'm going to say a couple other things. Uh, in, in 2014, Long Beach is submitting a $2 million grant application under the Metro Open Street Grants Program to, um, 
to, to further our, our bike program and to make our, our, our streets more, the, the infrastructure that, that Robert's talking about. It would be implemented in 2015. Caltrans has a complete streets program, so we're all moving in the direction that we all believe in, which is that we need to accommodate pedestrians, we need to accommodate uh, bicycles. But what we're really talking about doing, and this is a theme that runs through all of these environmental questions, is we're trying to change the culture. We're trying to live more in harmony with nature. We're trying to be healthier. And in order to change that culture, I think we need to adopt a program where we educate people about the stewardship of nature, the benefits of what it is that, uh, that we're all talking about up here, but specifically for uh, bicycling and, and enhancing, celebrating the bicycle program. I'd bring Cyclovia to Long Beach once a month, uh, as soon as we possibly could, and you would begin to change that culture. City Council just approved the mobility plan, and in that, obviously, is the efforts that the council members who are currently on board uh, went through with the planning department and others to make certain that we, we do increase the number of bike lanes. But more importantly, we've got to look at the population that we have in the city of Long Beach. Okay. We have people who don't ride bicycles. We have an aging population that doesn't feel safe to ride bicycles, and so we have to make certain that we're also pedestrian friendly. And unfortunately, in the ranking of um, pedestrian safety, we're rarely low. Um, so we've got to focus on that because we've got to combine the two um, to make sure that people get out there and enjoy the wonderful things that we have in terms of our park plan. I will tell you what we've done in, over in the 5th Council District. Um, I brought a bike rental facility into El Dorado Park so that we could encourage people to come in the park and to bicycle. And you can rent a bicycle or you can rent a four-person Surrey bike and go through with your family and enjoy the park um, on, the, on the concrete path, but also just enjoy bicycling. We've had a Bike Art District Day where we took people out, and yes, I did bike. Um, and we went through, we, I thought it would be fun to use one of those Surrey's thing. trust me, do not do it unless you have four strong people who can, <clears throat> can help you. But we biked our, our, the 5th Council District, which by the way, geographically is the largest district in the city of Long Beach. Um, we also have had bike safety programs for kids. Um, we have the Safe Routes to School program in our schools. I have 22 schools in my district. We've worked with the, the different uh, schools so that, and our traffic engineer to create programs where the kids are encouraged to take their bicycles and to bicycle safely. I think it, uh, Doug's correct. We've got to continue to create the culture uh, that this is an acceptable way of uh, transportation. I will tell you, as a kid, I got on my bicycle uh, the, to go to school, and in the summer, the moment I got up, I got on that bike, and I was gone until the, tra the lights came on. And we can't do that anymore, and we've got to figure out how we get those kids encouraged to get out there and bike.